we'll just strongly recommend like we did um, last month. So. Okay. Call to order at 302. Are there any announcements? No. Reggie? Any announcements that you want to make? No, 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 no. Nothing? Okay. Public comment? No. Didn't think so. Um, minutes are uh, not ready to approve via written status, but um, as you guys know, you can find um, the recordings of the meeting, past meetings, on YouTube uh, provided here in the agenda. Um, new items for consideration. David, you ready? Sure, uh, yeah. 2A, College Hill Neighborhood Association donation. Yep. And I need you to be at the microphone, please. So I don't have a, a slide presentation. This is pretty simple. Uh, we have um, a donation that is being uh, offered by the uh, Sunnyside Neighborhood Association for uh, Grandparents Park. Uh, back in 2015, uh, they applied for a grant through AARP and, and we received some money and we made some improvements to Grandparents Park, which is right over there along Kellogg, it's on Kellogg Drive. And so uh, they did that again and received another $5,000 donation. And so we're gonna work on uh, installing uh, two picnic tables, one regular picnic table, a handicap uh, accessible picnic table, and a, uh, what they call a multi-person sway swing. And so that will use up that money. However, we found out that the delivery of those items um, it's not going to show up until February, so uh, we've had to ask for an extension uh, with AARP about um, um, uh, allowing that money to sit there for a while, and, and they approved that. So uh, what we need is, is, is an agreement from you guys to go ahead and take this on to city council and get their approval. Um, it'll be on consent, and so um, whenever we can get that on the city's agenda we'll, we'll send it on through so that's a nice little donation there and can I go on to the next one yeah. yep so we also have a donation from the College Hill Neighborhood Association uh, which several years ago uh, some people that um, belong and are active in that association started raising some fu uh, funding for the basketball court they wanted to replace the basketball court and so with the 2021 CIP, we have $225,000 of uh, CIP funding to replace three basketball courts. They've been running about $55,000, and then there's about uh, uh, $5,000 of overhead that uh, we need, so that's about uh, $60,000 per court. Well, if we take that 15,000 that was donated by College Hill, Add it to the 225,000 CIP, we have the 240,000. And if the bids come in, uh, like they've been coming in, we should be able to do all four of those basketball courts. So again, that's a nice donation. So I need approval uh, from the park board to go ahead and, and address the city council uh, on both those donations. And again, uh, that will be consent. So. Okay. And the College Hill Association, that's the four basketball courts, correct? Right. The, the delay in the sunny side, is that just a supply chain issue? Yes, exactly. Hmm. Exactly. They gave us an estimate of about February to get both of those items. Okay. Sure. You guys have any questions? Yeah, any questions? Could you describe a little bit of the basketball renovation? I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure I just totally understand what the, trans so, that, the net outcome is going to be. Say that again. I'm, I just I, I was just curious what the outcome. I just want to know what the the finished product of the basketball courts will look like. If there's any details you can share about that, I just yeah. We've tried to we 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 use this um, um, instead of doing post tension concrete with the basketball courts, we just do a, a four to five inch slab, and so it'll be taking out the old court, taking out the goals, um, putting in a new concrete slab. Um, we're going to have new goal posts, and we're going to have a. a a new uh, glass backboard that we've adopted. We we just put one in a half of a court up there at uh, uh, can't think of the name of the park up there uh, north. Uh, 
um, Sherwin Glen. Sherwood Glen. Uh, we put a little uh, court up there with a nice new, looks looks much more modern than our white backboards with the orange, uh, you know, goals on them. <coughs> still. So it should look good. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Will that project start pretty much immediately once we get uh, consent? Um, uh, once, no, it'll have to go through its bid process and then they'll have to hire a contractor to, to build it. <laughs> so uh, it, it'll be managed by engineering and my guess it'll be spring mm -hmm. before they get okay. started on them. They're just now starting this year's uh, down at Osage. They're putting in the pickleball court and the tennis court at Osage and also the basketball court out at Boston Park. I'm glad that we're going through a bid process there because some of the material that we're seeing in the construction industry is very volatile right now, as I'm sure you're aware. Mm -hmm. um, it's very tough to make a call on what it's going to do six months from now. So, um, but you know, we'll see what, what the numbers come in at and hopefully, uh, you know, we're right there. So, so uh, what we did, we kind of took that into consideration. Uh, the last three courts that were bid came in at 49,940. So we bumped it up to 5,000. And then we have the uh, overhead costs of another 5,000. So we might, we have some cushion in there, I okay. think. Okay, good, so good. That's hopefully good. it'll work. College Hill is very excited about getting it put in. Excellent. Well, guys, uh, I think I'm confident in uh, moving this forward to uh, council. So I would move, or recommend moving it forward to council to be put on the consent agenda. Does that require a second? I don't think so. Let's put it in order. All right, we're yeah. not doing it. It's not a motion. It's not a formal motion. So it's just a recommendation. If y'all are I, I agree. That's what it means. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. I'll look at it, but it's pretty much, I mean, it's not a, you don't have a quorum, so you're just going to make a recommendation. Okay. No continuation of prior business. Um, is Emma here? Is she going to join us? No? Okay. Um, no finance update this month. Uh, communication update. Troy is obviously out of town. Um, Reggie, did you want to hit on anything there? Uh, nothing new on that. Uh, Troy still continuing to be the point of contact for communication for the golf division and the golf advisory in conjunction with uh, Penny in the transition until everything is finalized moving forward. So. Excellent. Okay. Uh, recreation update. All So I have a, an update for both uh, the last two months since we didn't have an opportunity to do it for the previous month. So it's going to have some activity from the month of August as well as the uh, month of September as well. I hit the button thing. So the first one, uh, give an update on, as you guys know, that we reopened the pools again this summer after being closed uh, last summer for the Aquatics Master Plan. Uh, things went over really well with uh, the attendance that we had there. At most of our sites, we were reaching capacity at those particular locations about 3 o'clock uh, each of those days. So that was a good problem for us to actually have moving forward with this year. Uh, continue to move forward with planning for next year on some of the things that we can do a little bit differently. Uh, one of the challenges that we had towards the end of the year, you guys would notice, is that we closed down some of the pools a little bit earlier because of staffing shortages. So we're already uh, putting a plan in place so that we can address some of those for next year. Uh, the other thing that we try to make sure that we do as well is continue to do uh, uh, training for our lifeguard staff so they can prepare for that. And part of that is uh, working, of course, as a team uh, with being in those environments where they're responsible for the you know, life and safety of those individuals that are participating in those programs. So we implemented some of those things this summer as well. And the uh, staff from Orchard actually received the award for the 2021 season. 
So Boston Rec Center, uh, one of the things, uh, kind of similar uh, experience there, is that uh, some of our uh, summer camp programming uh, didn't happen for last year with some staffing issues that we have with some of the contractors that we work with. But we were able to open some of those back up this summer and had some great attendance for some of those classes that we had. Uh, that's one of the locations where we do quite a bit of our tech camps as well. So that came back on board and went extremely well. Uh, we also was the host site this year for, uh, like we normally are for the election on August the 3rd, and we'll be doing the same thing there for voting on November the 7th. Uh, we also were able to uh, get back in place with some of the things that we're doing with uh, preparing for uh, homeschooling and working with some of those students that are there and coming together and use some of our summer activities and preparing for the for upcoming school year as well. So Esmore Rec Center uh, has been one of our sites that we've had quite a bit of activity that's there for pickleball. So you can see there some of the numbers that we have there that we have uh, people to come out on a continued basis for that one to three time frame that we have during the week on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays as well. And they continue to be really active with uh, coming out on a regular basis and participating on both throughout the week and on the weekends as well. So we are able to add on some new staff there and working with some youth programming that we want to implement there as well with the pickleball classes. So working real closely with the tennis center and the staff there, we're doing those courses uh, at that location. So one of the things we try to make sure that we do as well is engage the community in being able to use access to our facilities. And we had a request from the VA about wanting to do some classes in the community for some of their uh, veterans. So we were able to open up uh, Boston, I mean Edgemore there, to allow them to do some of their classes with yoga and other things there uh, on site. And this was through a partnership where we allowed them to use the space in kind for those veterans to actually have it when we didn't have classes scheduled there. So we're actually going this week and we're getting an award from them on being a community partner to help expand their service and to reach out to some of those veterans who have been indoors and hadn't had opportunity to participate in some of the programs that they typically offer. So Linwood uh, Rec Center uh, actually opened up in September and started working with the Girl Scouts. It's another one of those community partners that we're working with as well to try to get some of those young people in the community out involved in some positive uh, programming. And they hosted a girl sign-up night that had 25 girls that signed up on that particular night. So one of the challenges they have in that area is finding locations where they can actually host the meetings. So we were able to work with them to be able to make that site available for them to actually use. So the next thing on the 7th and 8th, uh, we are working to expand some of our other classes that we all, uh, have there as well on site. You'll notice at the bottom we are doing some French and some Spanish classes. Uh, and on the 7th and 8th, we actually closed down. Uh, a little while back, we had a power surge that was there in the fire with our panel electrical planner there, and Evergy had to come in and replace that panel to make sure it's back up to spec. So we were able to get that done and work kind of in conjunction with the holiday to make sure it had the least amount of impact on programs that we had available. So Evergreen uh, has been really busy this summer. Uh, I'm sure you guys may have saw uh, earlier that we had worked with uh, uh, one of the uh, community organizations there to have it host a, a COVID uh, for the testing site for the vaccine to be able to come in and get those shots at that location had 55 people that actually came out there in conjunction with the health department to be able to get vaccinated there on site. Uh, we also work with uh, the Richita Rowing Association as well as uh, with one of the community partners here to offer a Youth uh, Horizons uh, group to do a rowing program there as part of their outreach and continue to build uh, team building with those young people that they serve in that particular community. So. Uh, as uh, we mentioned earlier, we're talking about we expanded a uh, disc golf course there, working in conjunction with David's team. We worked the uh, individual who designed the course for it, and David's team went out and actually put those nets in, uh, out from that design that we received from that particular individual to add out available to the community. It's been well received. A lot of people have been out using it. Tennis Center continues to be really active. Uh, we hosted uh, the one of our... Uh, uh, pickleball tournaments there, and this is the second year for the event, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we had 159 players last year, and this year we expanded over to 200 and something players. So we had people coming from surrounding states, from Missouri, Oklahoma, 
And uh, this is one of the largest pickleball tournaments that's in the area here and continue to grow as we get more word out about the facilities and the enhancements that we have there at that location. So Wooded Rec Center uh, continues to be extremely active. Uh, we, that particular location has rentals that are there every night of the week that we're using uh, for either basketball teams that are renting the space or youth organizations that are coming out using this space. And they had a really good uh, rate for making the classes for this particular uh, session as well. So you'll see some of those classes that are there that are offered for the youth in the community that we're making sure that those classes are actually going. You can see there's a 90% success rate on one of them there, if I'm not mistaken, and then a 57% uh, success rate on the other one. So that you guys kind of have an idea of the industry rate uh, for a lot of those classes are normally in the 40 to 45 percent range. So you can see they're extremely uh, above what that actual uh, enrollment levels are for those particular classes. So I wanted to kind of give you guys an overview of our summer camp program that we have that's a really big uh, asset to the community itself. And one of the things we do is work with uh, housing and we get funding for those programs to help subsidize those individuals who may not be able to afford those particular classes. So you'll see by each of those sites that are listed there the number of scholarships that we actually offer, uh, the cost per participant that's there, and the total funds that were available for each of those sites. So when we get the lump sum of the actual funds that we have divided out to those sites to be able to meet the needs in that particular community, so one of the things we did a little bit differently this year is housing allowed us to actually move those funds around based on needs. So normally at the beginning of the summer, we allocate where those funds are going to go. And if they're not used, we don't use them. But we were able to have some flexibility this year to be able to actually expand that to be able to use those funds up for the summer for the most part. So this kind of gives you a breakdown of the scholarship participation by each of those particular communities. So you'll see by those areas there what percentage of those funds that we had available were used at those sites. And one of the things that we have noticed is that there's two options on our summer camps that we have. We have our summer of discovery, which is our traditional day camp uh, that's 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then we have our summer activity camp, which is a more condensed camp from 10 to 5. And the cost is a very big difference in that to be able to make it affordable for those communities that have a bigger need. So that's why you'll see some of the, the scholarship participation number a little bit lower in some compared to the other because traditionally those communities haven't used those fundings as much because there's not a need, as much of a need there. So this kind of shows what we use for each of those sites for the funds that we actually expended. So out of the $57,000 that we had there based on the community needs, we are able to use the majority of those funds up and it shows what the balance was that was for this year that we didn't use. So that's a big difference from what we've done before in the past because we had those funds allocated for the area and not able to move them around where there's need. So that's based an overview for August and September and if you guys have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Any questions for Reggie? Good stuff going on. Thanks, Thank Reggie. Uh, David, I'm going to circle back to you real quick on the basketball courts because this is how my brain works. Um, <laughs> are we Have we determined whether we are going to bid those separately or in a package? I think they're in a package because we get a little better rate. Thank That's you. what we did the last time. Anyway. Well, that was good. all three of them once. Yeah, perfect. Okay, I'll hop into the uh, golf update. Um, the Golf Advisory Committee uh, met last Thursday. Um, basically, we went over um, financials and uh, gave an update on the RFP or the selection uh, process uh, for the RFP, which happened the day prior. Um, we had seven um, proposals come in. We selected four to move forward um, to the interview process, which will take place on October 28th. Um, Penny, have we uh, notified the... Um, I have not been made aware that we have, okay. so I would say no at this point. I will uh, hold off on, on sharing that information um, until we can properly coordinate with those guys. Um, I would imagine the four that are 
um, moving forward have been notified. I'm just not sure about the, the three that have not been selected. Okay. Um, so I will um, pass on, on sharing that information. Um, there is a part of the selection committee. I think we have shared this um, before. Um, there is a member of the park board. There is a member of the golf advisory committee. Um, there is a member of the golf staff and park staff. There is a member of finance, legal, and then two members from the golfing um, community uh, here in Wichita. Um, I will not share those names um, just out of respect for their privacy so that they don't get hit up by um, firms proposing or the media. Um, we want to be as um, cognizant as we can that we are uh, doing this the right way. So. Um, that's kind of the update there. Again, October 28th, we will uh, be conducting interviews. And as soon as I get word that the um, three that were not selected have been notified by the city that they were not selected, um, I will share um, who is moving forward to the interview processes. Any questions on that? Okay. Park maintenance and forestry. <coughs> Yeah, the Park Maintenance and Forest Revision uh, Report. Um, September production, production numbers there, uh, we kind of give you that uh, every time. Um, you know, it's pretty, pretty standard amount of uh, items that we hit. Uh, we did have to start watering some trees uh, uh, this last month, two months. Uh, got a nice rain. That's going to help us through the fall here. Uh, my my crew that takes care of watering trees is almost depleted. Uh, so thank goodness we had a nice rain here. That'll that'll help out the the new trees that I got planted last year. Um, uh, just here a, a week or so uh, last week, uh, we had a nice volunteer project up at McAdams Park. Uh, Bombardier um, brought uh, some people over and, and we planted some trees there in McAdams Park, which was nice of them. Uh, um, there you can see that they uh, were getting a little instruction from Gary Ferris, our, our arborist, and of how to plant the trees and so forth. So um, tailgate meetings, uh, we had a number of those. RFP for the replacement of the bucket trucks is going out. The RFP for the replacement of the chipper and the stump grinders going out. Um, our lucidity maintenance, um, the way we do our work orders is pretty steady. Um, we have started this du duo system integrated process where we have to validate our sign in and so forth. So we got that all set up and going. Uh, we've been doing a lot of large log management, uh, loads of logs hauled to job sites and so forth. Uh, there's a picture of the folks that came and did the volunteer project. That was pretty cool. It's kind of interesting. We had this third party that, that reached out to us just out of the blue. And I can't, I can't remember their name now. Well, they, uh, they actually got with this group, asked if they wanted to do a volunteer project in Wichita, and then they come to us and said, uh, we have this group that would like to do a volunteer project. Uh, can we get something set up? And, and we ended up, um, you know, buying some trees. They bought most of the trees. We bought uh, a few of the trees to, to get to the number we were after. I think we planted 62 trees. Um, but. I wish I knew more about this group. I might call them back and say, hey, you got another project, you know, because uh, it worked out pretty well, you know. Uh, and uh, Bombardier is a, a nice company to work with. So. October scheduled activities, uh, uh, emergency responses needed. We're going to do inspections, pruning, tree removals, uh, stump grinding. So our construction and special projects section, uh, how do I go back 
The other? Um, down here in this bottom corner. Uh, while I have that gate up, um, over there at uh, the Keeper of the Plains, the, the parking lot to the north, um, we've had all kinds of problems over there. And uh, so the police department came and visited with us and, and we, we come up with a plan to address that parking lot. And so people were, um, since Exploration Place shuts their parking lot down in the evenings, everybody's coming around to the north side trying to park and go use the bike path. Well, they were parking off into the grass. They were parking all over the place. So we put bollards all the way around it. And now we've put this gate up and, and the police department is going to work on opening and closing the gate um, because it would cost me overtime to do that. And it's very expensive uh, to do a whole year's worth of that. So PD is going to help uh, open and close it, uh, trying to help get control of what's going on in that parking lot. They did have some video of, of when Old Town shut down. They come over, there was a big fight in the parking lot. It was not fun to watch, it was horrible. Uh, so my guys, my construction crew, uh, got with it and we got the bollards put up and we got the gates put up. I think their work looks pretty nice. We'll see how PD handles the opening and closing. Um, our fear is people getting locked in or getting locked out. Uh, if that gate doesn't open at six o'clock, we've got a lot of hikers and runners that show up there to go run the park bike path. So they'll complain and we don't want to get anybody locked in either. But So uh, we've had past history with this and it'll happen. <laughs> we'll just have to figure out how to deal with it. Uh, September accomplishments uh, completed playground construction out at Pawnee Prairie Park. You can see a bunch of pictures there. We installed the pipe gates here at the keeper, installed bollards and parking around the keeper, installed recycled uh, rubber plastic tables. Uh, uh, we got a grant from uh, the Kansas Department, KDHE, and uh, it's a matching thing, a 50 50 match. Uh, they have these. Uh, picnic tables that are made out of recycled uh, tires. And so we bought some of those and we put them uh, under one of our, our shelters down there at Emory Park. I installed 125 cubic feet of the engineered wood fiber safety surface on the playground at Harrison Park. That's another cool volunteer. I've had a lot of volunteer groups that come and have helped. Um, that was Mc, uh, McConnell Air Force that came over and we spread all that uh, safety surface all over the playground and you can see what they're doing there and the results of it. They also helped to strike the parking <coughs> lot uh, and then they went around and picked up trash. So uh, that was a pretty cool work day. Uh, Philip uh, had a group that went down to Ch uh, Clap Park mm -hmm. and picked up trash down there. You had, what, 25, 25. Uh, folks working down there. They pulled out a bunch <laughs> of trash out of that creek how did my long handle grabbers work? Did anybody use them? They worked perfect. Oh. I bought these <laughs> nine foot long grabbers just for reaching out into a pond or for reaching down into a creek. And my staff does, wasn't really crazy about buying those, but we need to buy some more of them because they work. Uh, you can get in a boat and reach out into the water and they work. So we've had quite a few volunteer. I'll speed along here, I'm talking too much. Um, September support activity, we did a lot of uh, different things from graffiti to traffic signs to um, closed and reopened the uh, uh, river access points uh, a couple times, retrieved picnic, uh, <laughs> retrieved picnic table out of the bottom of the canal. Somebody took a picnic table and threw it off into the canal route and we had to go down and grab that out. Was it okay? I mean, it's not damaged? Yeah, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't too bad. It was still, in, I don't know if they partied out there that night or what they did, but it was down there in the... October schedule, we got a slate of, of, of work to do. Um, that Bailey Street Quarter always has broken down fence and stuff, so we're always down there working. Uh, we've been putting signs up about stuff all over the place. 
the uh, shelter building down at uh, North uh, Linwood Park is coming along. It's starting to look like something there. I went down and took a picture of it. So that should be, you know, that caught up. Uh, they caught that one on fire and burn it down um, or burn a good portion of it. But they've done a really nice job on the rock. Um, park maintenance is just working on normal, um, uh, you know, mowing, trimming, edging, trying to get things put to bed for the winter. Hopefully after this rain here, it'll slow down. Um, but you can see we've, illegal dumping continues to be a challenge. So far this year, we've picked up 94 mattresses, 340 tires, and cleaned 705 illegal dump sites. That consumes a lot of our time, and it takes us away from doing the other important work that we need to be uh, doing. So if anybody has any questions on all that, I know that's a lot of information, but... What became of the bathroom that was damaged? What's that? What became of the bathrooms that were damaged? I, I'm still missing that. The, the, the bathrooms that were damaged previously over the summer, what became of that? The bathrooms, the bathrooms that were damaged, the pool or whatever else it was? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. out at Boston and so yes. forth, and, and that um, um, uh, challenge to go beat up. Yes. Um, it, the timing was such that since we have the COVID, uh, funding, uh, we had to start closing down bathrooms earlier. Uh, we went right to closing them down. And so they immediately started uh, shutting bathrooms down after that deal out there at Boston. And so uh, we've had them locked down. We haven't had any broken into, Reggie, have we? I don't think any's been broken into since we've locked them up. Um, so yeah, that, that's how we handled that. We just shut them down. We're going to repair Boston when we get a chance. It's going to have to get fixed for uh, the next year. David, going back to the volunteering um, portion of that, do we have somebody on staff that is actively reaching out to groups um, or, or maybe a part of a um, kind of a networking group that would be able to talk to some of these larger companies and say, hey, if you've got you know, 15 people, 20 people, whatever, that want to volunteer on any given Saturday or whatever to go plant trees. Um, you know, do we have somebody on staff like that? I know you mentioned that um, picking up the illegal dumping sites and so yeah. forth take a lot of time. Um, but I think, you know, if, if we were actively searching for different groups throughout the community that I think we would find some, um, some interested users uh, in that. Uh, everybody's looking for, I wouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people, a lot of companies are, are looking for um, kind of a, a, a business engagement or um, something to uh, bring their employees together and, and um, yep. do something. So no, uh, Mr. Houtman challenged myself and Reggie and, and our department to come up with a organized official volunteer program. And we've taken some baby steps to get there, but everything that I've been doing this year has, has come to us. We don't have anybody that reaches out and tries to set that up. We have a person on our staff, Elise, that came from um, California, and she worked in a city, and that's all she did. Uh, that was her job, was, was setting up the volunteer. But, man, it takes so much time uh, to do all of that because then you really need to track it. You need to do background checks and all that kind of stuff, and we just don't have the manpower to do that. So as calls come in, I just organize them, most of them wanting to do some kind of a park project. Sometimes uh, they're at the rec centers too, but a lot of them just want to work out in the park to do something good for the community. And so uh, to answer your question, no, we don't have anybody officially reaching out, but this year I've had a ton of phone calls. I, I've had a project, two or three projects a month going somewhere. So uh, uh, the part uh, now, where we do do some more like special events that we have that we need volunteers to support with like Open Street and some of the larger ones, we have someone that coordinates volunteers for those, but it's not ongoing for service projects. Gotcha. You know, that'd be something, I, I think there'd be a lot of groups that would be interested. I think that's a great idea. Like if we could approach, I mean, I know you don't have the time in house, but you could put the challenge out to say, for example, the chamber to say, if you've got young professionals who want to pick a, pick a weekend that you'd want to do this, I'm sure there, there are some affiliated yeah. groups that would carry the ball on that stuff. I think it's a fantastic idea. I do have to mention that we, uh, uh, Michael McCork, McCorkle, 
Mm. Uh, he came to us and, and he was wanting to do volunteering. So I have set him up as my my volunteer, volunteer coordinator. And he reaches out to some of these groups and he follows up with them. He goes and, and delivers the pickup sticks and trash bags. He'll have them sign out. He'll keep track of that stuff. So he's been doing our meet and greet uh, for us to try to get uh, some of that because we just don't have time to go out and meet. And Michael's done a fair amount of the meet and greets for us. Michael's the perfect guy for that. Yeah, he's he likes absolutely. He, he will do if you challenge him with reaching out to people. I bet you Michael will jump right on that. He has his own uh, uh, trash grabber stick mm -hmm. that somebody from uh, when he was overseas uh, in Switzerland uh, gave that to him, and he's hand, he's had it for like twenty years, <laughs> and he's very proud of his stick that he goes around and picks up trash with. So he's a good dude. Yeah, nice. Well, I would, Thank I would, you, uh, you know, also, you know, as we talk to different organizations as a board um, throughout the community, maybe keep that in mind. Um, you know, if somebody's looking for a, a volunteer opportunity, uh, keep that in the back of your mind. So it's great. Um, and that, I, I saw, thing, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, Phil, I just want to say thank you for, for organizing that, those 25 people to go down there. It wasn't there just me, it was Richard Ruth too. So I mean, we were trying to, yeah. you know, get the neighborhood surrounding clap to know that it's now a park now is on a golf course. It's, it's, the park for our four neighborhoods to share that that park right grandview Heights, middle arc um, hilltop and, and east mount vernon right so it's more about you know getting it out there it's for use now right so um, that's fantastic um, good work there david you, you mentioned we need more nine foot sticks to yeah <laughs> trash. How, how many or, or how much does one of those sticks cost and how many do we need? 119 bucks. They're, they're pretty heavy duty. I've been trying to buy really heavy duty uh, pickup sticks so that they don't break and fall apart. So yeah, they're fairly expensive. I bought uh, 25 of the three footers, uh, some six footers and some nine footers and it was almost $3,000 wow. uh, to buy all that stuff. So. I do have a correction that I probably need to make back there on the, the donation from the sunny side neighborhood association i said it was five thousand it's really four thousand five hundred uh, they have to keep some money back to uh, throw a party and to do a ribbon cutting and they chose to keep back five hundred dollars so the donation is really forty four thousand five hundred i apologize for that anything else for david yes good work um, aleo is not here um, did Troy relay any information on the Parks Foundation updates? Uh, nothing new as of yet. Uh, I know that they're starting back meeting again now and just getting active with some things that they're doing there as well. They did so. not meet last week. Okay. But the month before that, I think they did meet, didn't they? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got one update. I received some uh, pretty heartbreaking news uh, this morning. Um, Tori's mom has been... Uh, battling cancer um, for some time now and she lost her battle um, last night um, so that's why she is not um, in attendance um, I've, I've talked to Penny prior to this meeting um, about um, potentially getting um, her something her, her family something whether it be a bouquet of flowers or just something nice that um, you know we can send her from from the park board um, I probably ask each of the park board members to throw in like 20 bucks um, to, to cover that expense um, if that's okay with you guys so cancer sucks and uh, Tori if if you're listening to this um, or when you see this uh, just know that we're thinking of you and, and we love you and you're in our thoughts and prayers so um, that's all I got director's update uh, nothing new on uh, on our end. Uh, probably the biggest thing that we're doing right now is we're transitioning. I'm sure you guys will know that uh, Mac Adams Rec Center is transitioning over to Carl Brewer Community Center. So we're working with our communications team to put a plan in place with that to start the updating our website and all our collateral material with that change. Uh, looking for sometime uh, next month to actually do official uh, signage that we can put on site there uh, with some QR codes to kind of let the community know what those updates are uh, and the progress towards uh, that particular uh, renovation there on site. Uh, we did uh, 
transition this year with our youth football league that we're down at uh, South Lakes Park this year. I've uh, been working real closely with South Patrol on that, with having a presence there with security and things on site. And that's working out really well. So Captain Nicholson and Lieutenant Slater, who's down in the area, has been a real big help with that. So those are the two major things that we've kind of been transitioning on and preparing for, uh, for this, this year. Good. Uh, was well attended, uh, and I think we want to estimate about 8,000 uh, at our open streets event, which was way more than what we anticipated. Good. And I'm sure Troy probably would have reported on that, but I forgot. I uh, saw some pictures. I believe I was out of town, but I saw some pictures, and I was a little jealous I couldn't be there. It looked like a great party. So. It was a perfect day. Yeah. Perfect temperature. It was great. Yeah. Once we came out. Excellent. Yeah, I'm sure uh, communications was a little um, hamstrung over the uh, Boyle advisory. Um, yes. So <laughs> shout out to uh, Megan, um, her constant communication on social media. Um, some of them were, were pretty funny, so I think one of them went viral. <laughs> but um, if that's it, guys, um, anything that we want to address right now or anything that we want to put on the agenda uh, for next month? I just want to say, is, you know, is there, once we, you know, vote on a recommendation to send to council for consent, or um, is there a way to, to put that information out there? I think we're not being very communicative about this is the who, what, when, where, and why, right? And it, and it takes plenty of a while to do, to many, many minutes. I think by the time we make a recommendation and it gets to council for approval, somewhere in between there, miscommunication happens. I think the ice cream thing is that part of that miscommunication. So, um, which I kind of got caught up in this last week. So, um, somewhere in between us saying yes to Director Halman, move forward with your RFP, go to council. Um, that's now being construed as something else, right? So, I don't know. If there's a there's a way that we can communicate as a park board. that says today we voted on this, and this is a recommendation to council on moving forward with something, and and this is why. And it doesn't mean X, Y, or Z. It just means that we're opening it up for more communication, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I kind of see this as a social media um, push that we could that we could do to be more um, transparent right. Right, with the community. Um, a lot like what the council members do. Um, I think you know, I've seen Brian Fry do it um, and a couple others that just kind of say, this is what happened at the council meeting today and this is what to be prepared for. Right. Um, so I could see something like that working, uh, being more transparent. Maybe it's something that we can put on the uh, under communication update for, for next month. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what that looks like if um, one of us or uh, Troy wants to stay behind a park board meeting and just give a quick 30 second or minute video right. and say this is what uh, we voted on today and this is why, uh, just to kind of give the community an idea of what's going on in here. I got a, one quick question before we adjourn. I know that you had addressed uh, staffing issues just under the aquatics piece. I just wanted to know if there was a way by our next meeting that we could talk about what the staffing needs as they stand are now. Like what is the delta between full staffing now that we have approved as a city of a $15 minimum wage? How, how, how is that part of the plan looking forward next year? Are we gonna like to avoid any other staffing related shutdowns? of any kind. I just wanted to, to make certain, because I've gotten asked questions about that, just about staffing levels and where they stand, and that it'd be good to know a whole picture of where our staffing stands as an, an entire department. Sure. And, and probably the majority of those staffing uh, shortages is going to happen on Davis side, where uh, with the park maintenance and sure. updates on it, majority of our staff that we use for the rec side are seasonal employees that we bring on based on needs on the time of the year. But we can definitely tell what our full staffing level looks like for operational pools and what we would need. And then Pastor David do the same thing on his side as well with what his needs are and what positions are currently available. And, and I think what the goal would be is if there's anything that the public can do to encourage that, if there's anything council needs to do to help encourage a closing of that gap because the last thing we want if we're i'm looking at these numbers some of these numbers look fantastic let's capitalize on that if we're doing well with our budget let's close these gaps and continue our our successes Minor, uh, staff. and so yeah we can uh, put together a chart to know where we're at um, i think the last time i was here i talked about how we 
promoted a bunch of people internally, and we're trying to get uh, new faces on board. You know, and to get those guys moved out, and get new faces on board. So, that's all. <laughs> thank you. Guys, I just want to say the last two months, I want to uh, thank you both personally for, for showing up. I know um, we're volunteers here and, and sometimes life gets in the way, but it's really important that, um, you know, we continue to, um, you know, show up and, and give our two cents because it's really important for um, this department um, and for our city. Um, so thank you guys for, for being here, for your dedication. And um, I will be sending out a couple emails, um, hopefully tonight. One, um, Eric, I think you mentioned gently nudging um, yep. to let us know if you're not gonna be here or not be in attendance, or if you're gonna be out of town and have to utilize the team's meeting. Um, the other will be um, on uh, the Tories situation, so. Okay, anything else? If not, we can adjourn. Thanks everybody. Thank you.